When we design an application for an audience or demographic, we are not sure about how this application is going to make millions. So we just try and expand along the way the impact grows. And we might end up in situations that might cause problems for our users. And that's not always related to the thinking behind the design. Sometimes it may be because of the short-sightedness that we have. Sometimes it can be because of the lack of budget. Or sometimes it could just be because we don't have the proper understanding of how things actually work. And when things are working fine, we never question the design or don't necessarily think about the problem we might face. And that's where the problem begins. In the microservice architecture, where you're dealing with not just one or two or ten APIs, we might be working with thousand APIs, which are working in tandem with each other. So that could be failures with related to API on the service, the authentication can fail, and there might be a situation where the CPU utilization and the memory consumptions make the application or server to crash. And when you don't have additional services to provide you the proper information for your team to debug issues, you are going to end up in problems that could affect you and your users in a very bad way. Previously, we have learned about the features that AWS provides us, such as auto scaling or resource scheduling or batching. But in order to take the decision on how much we can expand or scale depends on the state of the environment at a particular given point of time. For that, we need a service that can help us collect the data points or logs, which can help us monitor the current state or the state over a period of time and help us create action items to mitigate the issue. And the same way lets us analyze the data we have in order to avoid such issues in the future. And that's where CloudWatch comes into the picture. So now this is the right time for us to talk about CloudWatch. So when you think of CloudWatch, remember something very clearly. It is a service that you could actually ignore and it won't make any impact on the overall performance of your actual application. But if not used properly and effectively, would surely result in issues that you might have a hard time debugging and resolving. That's why it is called CloudWatch. Along with providing a feature set where you can actually send logs for the services that you're consuming using log streams and use its dashboards to create reports on the performance of your service, it can also help you analyze the data points to understand where your application could actually break. So as it is rightly mentioned here, CloudWatch collects monitoring and operational data in the form of logs, metrics and events and visualizes it using automated dashboards so you can get a unified view of your AWS resources, applications and services that run in AWS and on-premises. There are terms here that might confuse you a bit, but when in this situation, try and isolate what you did not understand. I'm sure you know what logs are and metrics. I'm not sure if you know about this or not. So, okay, so I'll tell you something about metrics. So just think about this. So if you invest $100 and you get 105 in return, you have a profit of $5. And if you get $95 in return, then you have loss of $5 because you have invested $100, isn't it? When it comes to AWS, if you have deployed a service on a T2.micro and the CPU utilization reaches to above 95% and you then try and make some changes and it shoots down to 75%, there will be a considerable amount of boost in the performance. That's called performance metrics. The way you measure and take a quantitative approach on a data point over a given period of time gives you a form of metrics based on which you can analyze the way your services are performing. So AWS CloudWatch is comprised of four pillars to provide visibility into your cloud resources and applications. And I might repeat them a few times, so please bear with me on that. So and the four pillars are collect, monitor, act and analyze. The basic idea of using CloudWatch is to send logs to the resources you're working with, which may be service logs, application logs, load balancer logs, or as default service logs, instance log, or any other form of logs that you wish to send using the CloudWatch agent. Yes, obviously with resources like EC2, Lambda, and S3, this is most commonly used. And when it comes to monitoring, you can make use of the CloudWatch dashboard and create awesome visualizations and alerts for the change in the data points that you have. And that works cross region as well. And the third one, ACT, 
is the most interesting part because based on the data inside that you have you can create events that trigger resources to achieve allocations and meet the demands of your application like ec2 or container auto scaling using cloudwatch events and with cloudwatch you can analyze data over a short or a long period of time with up to one second and that too in real time these four pillars that you have here help you in application monitoring system-wide visibility resource optimization and unified operational health and this is just the tip of the iceberg cloudwatch is much more when you use it effectively don't worry about some of these terms here we will talk about them shortly so no matter what kind of application you're working with or what region it belongs to you get the facility to create log streams and send application and resource logs to cloudwatch so that you can analyze the metrics and logs and so that you can act quickly to resolve the issues so if you see these applications they are most related to real-time data and applications like these are critical to run all the time and cannot afford to have a downtime so business critical applications needs a data set and real-time analysis to ensure that the application has very little downtime and as a solutions architect it's your job to ensure that you have this in place you already know what application monitoring is so when it comes to system-wide visibility, you may have applications hosted at AWS Cloud or on-premises. You can't ignore a few resources or services just because you don't like them. Or if you're working on a multi-tier application, you cannot ignore the database because you are just storing data there. That's not going to work. With CloudWatch, you get the exposure to monitor and get data about all the tiers of the application that you have so that you won't miss out on anything. And let's talk about resource optimization to auto scale instances when there is a peak CPU utilization of over 95%. You choose trigger events so that you could increase the number of instances you want and reduce when the CPU utilization decreases or reduces. And these things actually help the system to have unified operational health by making sure you have the alerts and notification in place based on the events that you wish to trigger. You know what? If suppose you have a trigger and you have created an alert you can send a notification to the SNS topic and you can get notified on your phone or email as well. And that's the overall picture. So as I told you before, and I repeat myself once again, when you think of implementing CloudWatch, think of these four pillars. Collect, monitor, act and analyze. And we will discuss more on this now. And there is one more request. If you still haven't subscribed, then this might be the right time to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you get notified whenever I upload a video. It surely helps the channel. So if you wish to support, please hit the join button and become a member. Having said that, let's move on.